Hello folks, I'm a wee bit excited because I've just ordered a new vice from America. Thankfully, we can leverage the power of video editing and at the click of a finger, we can go get it now. Seems the DHL man has just dropped off a Saunders Machine Works box at my front door. This must be the new vice. I'm amazed how quickly it's arrived. I only ordered it on Friday afternoon. It's Monday morning at the moment, and it's already here. That's really quite bloody impressive. Let's go take a look and see what's inside. Got all my little accessories. Ah, some stickers. That's nice. A little booklet. Ah, see, I like this. Conscientious packaging. No peanuts, just using recyclable materials. Whoa. So this is the meat of the operation, the main body of the vice itself, and this is the other side here. So why don't we take a look at what's inside the bag first. Here we are, got Saunders Machine Works t-shirt. I thought it'd be quite fun to get one of the adaptive ones. I can wear that around the workshop. Inside this little one, we've got, these are car lane tiny vices. So this is a very clever design where you take these screws, you tighten them down, and then it clamps inwards. And then these are the parts actually made by Saunders Machine Works themselves. So if you're not familiar with Saunders Machine Works, they're the NYC CNC channel, one of my favorite channels, and I've learned a heck of a lot from them. So I suggest if you're interested in CNC work, a fantastic channel to follow. I absolutely love it. They've got loads of really useful fusion and uh, other related machining topics. Plus those are great factory tools. I get a real kick out of seeing those. So this is their special modular vice setup. Basically the idea is it works with fixture plates, much like the one that I've got. They produce their own ones for Tormac machines. You put this side on one end of the fixture plate and you put this side on the other. So this is the fixed side. You just put this into the uh, actual plate itself. It's got these alignment dowel pins. You might be able to see the oil in there to stop it from rusting during transit. This side goes opposite this one. Place it facing your part. You put your part in. You then, using these half inch bolts, tighten it into your fixture plate. And then using these tiny vices, these go inside these little slots here you then tighten up your actual workpiece. It's a very simple mechanism, and the best bit is it's really flexible and very low profile. I haven't got very much Z travel on my machine, so having a low profile vise is really useful. And the great thing about this one is, of course, I can then change it to whatever size that I need. I can make it really long, really thin. It doesn't matter because I've got a fixture plate, I can just make it fit. This is by far the easiest solution. And I don't really know why I didn't think of this beforehand. I've been watching the channel for ages. It's just common sense. What's the plan of action then for this thing? Well, for a start, I'm going to get used to working in imperial measurements because this is made in America and that's what they use over there. So everything's done in inches. These two pins on here are two and a half inches away from one another and the hole in the center is 1.25 inches. So no metric for me. For the actual plate, I'm going to have to make sure that none of these holes interfere with the ones that I've already got on there. Now, in on itself, that's not a particularly difficult task. I do have to make sure that I'm going to be very precise, otherwise this just won't fit. I think this is a good time to jump into Fusion 360 and we can take a look at what needs to be done. Well, this thing looks a little bit familiar, doesn't it? This is a 3D model of my fixture plate that I've got on my machine, and this is the thing that I was working on a few weeks ago. And what I've done is I've gone and added all the mounting holes here to the plate itself. Now, what I've chosen to do is have it somewhere over here in the middle. So if we just inspect it, we have the incredible 14.285 inches from the edge here. That's a wacky number. It's because I'm working in metric and this is a metric plate, but obviously these are in inches. So now I'm back in inches. The actual plate itself, the important part is the spacing between the holes here. So if we get it to stop flashing for a second, choose one of these points. The important distance here is this 2.5 inches from one hole center to the other. And these 
are a 0.25 inch radius. Now below that we've got half inch threads and that's what the bolts for the vise are going to thread into. Probably the thing I was most careful about doing here is making sure that none of these holes interfere with the ones that are already on the plate. So I've chosen this rather odd location largely because it doesn't get in the way and also having this part here free makes it a little bit easier to film and also to access. Over here it's quite easy to work with for like plate materials but if I've got a vise and it's going to be somewhere in the middle I don't really want to be craning over the corner by my door I'd rather stand towards the middle of the machine and that'll make it much easier. In terms of feed speeds and tool paths I'm going quite simple on this one I'm going to be using the bore command with a six millimeter polished edge end mill and that's going to be doing a smaller radius and then a larger one straight after and the interesting thing about these ones is that I'm going to be using this incredibly awkward sounding stock to leave minus 0.001811 inches that's actually minus 0.03 millimeters now that's the same clearance that I've used for the other dowel pin holes and it worked really well for that and after doing a little bit of experimenting with the half inch ones it also works fine for that so I'm sticking with that known quantity and that should provide a really nice press fit but isn't going to be too firm. For the actual speeds I'm going to be going with oh I can't work with any of this let's just switch this back to metric. Okay we're back in the metric system now I'm going to be using a standard 600 millimeters per minute so I'm sort of aiming for a 0.03 millimeter feed per tooth and uh, 376, 380. Basically, I want to hang around the kind of 380 surface uh, surface meter per minute mark. That tends to work very well with the end mills and the machine that I've got. And I'm basically just going to use those same settings for all the various tools. I've got another one which goes further down, and this creates the bore for the threads. Then we're going to thread mill it. Again, it uses exactly the same settings as the bore, I believe. Let's go take a look. The key point here. I'm going to be using a thread pitch of 1.994 millimeters and a pitch diameter offset of 2.25 millimeters. And then finally, we're going to finish up with a chamfer. I'm using the 2D contour for that because I've modeled it in rather than uh, using the 2D chamfer tool. Again, we're rocking 600 millimeters per minute, 20,000 RPM. So we're looking at a higher surface speed of 500 and that should leave a really lovely finish. I can remeasure that on the machine. So if I want it a little bit deeper, I just change the Z height there and it'll be nice and simple. Now I hope you forgive me, but I did a little bit of experimenting off camera. So this is a sheet of acetal, and it's the same material that I use in my bed. Now, the thing is, you'll see there's a lot of holes in it. Now I use this piece for testing out threading because I tend to thread mill all of my work. What I did here is I drilled an array of different holes. I wanted to find out exactly which settings to use for these screws, because I've never worked with these before, and they're very large and they're imperial. Now NYC CNC does have a really good uh, calculator for doing this. I used it as a rough basis and then drilled all these different holes so that I could find the exact sizing necessary. So if we take a look you'll see that on these ones this screw doesn't quite see it just about gets in there but it doesn't thread all the way in. And then if we look over here screw thread is starting to go all the way in and I found this one here which has a thread pitch offset of 2.25 millimeters works just right. Thread goes in, it's not too tight, it doesn't have any wobble when it's in there, and it doesn't go in with too much difficulty, which is good because if it's really, really tight, sometimes that can also damage the threads. Remember, this is a plastic, it's not aluminum or steel, so it's not going to be as durable as either of those materials. So it's good to have a tiny bit of play just to make sure that it goes in smoothly. The clamping will be done when you've got a lot of teeth engaged and then it's going to be fine. Let's get stuck into things by doing the half inch locating pinholes. I'm going to be using a 6mm polished cut end mill from Datron for this which should leave a great finish. Time to pop it into the machine and get it cutting.
The half inch dowel pin holes are now done. The next step is going to be thread milling the half inch by 13 threads that go on the underside and hold the vise down to the table. I'm going to be using one of these, which is a Datron M10 to M36 thread mill. So let's pop it in the machine. But before we do that, it's probably not a bad idea just to do a test fit with the vise in the plate without the threads, just to make sure that everything's going to line up. So fingers crossed, wish me luck. Come on, be good to me. Perfect. Now you'll see here there's a tiny bit of rock and that's because on the underside, might be tough to see here, there's a very, very faint radius on the inside of these dowel pins. We're going to be seeing to that later with a chamfer on the outside of these. But before we do that, let's get these threads in. Maybe it's just me, but I'm willing to call that one a little bit of a success. And I can't wait to give the vice a try on some of the heavier milling jobs that we've got on the future projects, some of which I think you're going to find quite exciting. Of course, a massive shout out has to go to Saunders Machine Works and the NYC CNC YouTube channel. They're an absolutely fantastic resource. And if you're really into CNC machining or just making in general, I definitely recommend having a look at their channel and seeing if there's anything that strikes your fancy. I'm a big fan of the machine shop tours and all of the Fusion 360 tutorials are fantastic. Speaking of channels, if this is your first time visiting here, definitely don't forget to subscribe because we've got some fantastic content just around the corner and I think it's gonna be really exciting and it would be such a shame for you to miss out. Until then, I'll catch you around. <laughs>